poorly treated sewage can pose a significant threat to drinking water and human health because it can contaminate drinking water, wells, and cause diseases and infections in people and animals. Typical pollutants in household wastewater are nitrogen, phosphorus, and disease-causing bacteria and viruses. When septic systems are properly designed, built, and maintained, they reduce or eliminate most human health or environmental threats posed by these pollutants. This video will show the construction of a C1 on-site sewage system, which, because of elevation, uses a pump to deliver effluent to the bed. The installer obtains a copy of the on-site sewage approval and reviews the plan for the property. The installer contacts the qualified person and advises that he is installing the system and of the date that he will have the system constructed and left open ready for inspection. The installer verifies the boundaries of the lot and begins to clear it, cutting the trees close to the ground and removing the brush and any large stumps. The contour trench is marked out in the proper location. Bottom and sides of the trench are raked to remove smearing, allowing proper filtration of fluids. Filter sand is placed in the trench to the required depth and raked level. A minimum of 125 millimeter of rock is placed in the trench for pipe support. Solid pipe is assembled on the top of the rock to the proper length. The end of the pipe is capped and holes are drilled in the bottom of the solid pipe to the required spacing. A 13 millimeter hole is drilled in the top of the pipe 150 millimeters back from the end to allow air to escape when the pump discharges. The pipe is checked for level. If the trench is higher than the pump chamber, a siphon brake is installed. The pipe is covered with 75 millimeter crushed rock. The completed rock trench is covered with barrier material and the trench is left open for inspection. The septic tank is a buried watertight container, typically made of concrete, fiberglass, or plastic. The purpose of the tank is to allow solids to settle to the bottom and oils and greases to float to the top. It also allows partial breakdown of the solid material. The location where the effluent pipe leaves the house is located and uncovered. An approved septic tank, sized according to the approval, is installed level with a minimum of 2% slope from the house to the tank. In this installation, a 2,800 liter two compartment tank was used. Minimum separation distances from the septic tank must be kept in mind, including 1.5 meters from the foundation drain. The seam is wiped clean, gasket material is applied, and the top of the tank is put in place. Only the mostly clear affluent leaves the tank and continues to the bed for further treatment. If the disposal bed is at a higher elevation than the septic tank, an approved pump chamber must be used to deliver the effluent to the bed. The pump chamber, sized according to the approval, is installed level. The pump is assembled and on-off alarm floats are set. The pump is installed in the pump chamber, making sure the pump is easily accessible from the riser. Additional risers may be necessary to bring the covers of the pump chamber and septic tank to grade. Wiring for the pump and alarms is connected according to the electrical code. The septic tank is connected to the house with a T or baffle installed at the inlet to the septic tank. The pipe is graded and supported with crushed rock. The pump chamber is connected to the septic tank with an approved effluent filter installed at the outlet of the septic tank. Filters are recommended as an added precaution to keep solids from entering the drain field and have been required on new installations in Nova Scotia since 2014. Filters must be removed periodically and cleaned to prevent sewage from backing up into home plumbing fixtures. The pump chamber is connected to the field bed Sealant is applied around all pipe connections to the tanks and foundation. 
The qualified person or professional engineer inspects the system and advises the installer that the system has been installed correctly and the system may be covered. The lids on the septic tank and pump chamber are fastened down and the tanks covered. Clean fill is pulled back over the trench. Final cover material is applied to the bed and raked level. Seed or sod is applied to the bed. Hay or straw may be applied to the bed to help minimize erosion. When the system is complete, including seed or sod, the installer must complete a completion of work form and provide a copy to the qualified person. After the final inspection, the qualified person will complete the certificate of installation form, send copies to the approval holder, Nova Scotia Environment, the installer, and the building inspector. This will include a diagram of the system, which will show the location of all parts of the system and should be kept with a deed for future reference. The septic system is now ready for the homeowner to use. To make the system last as long as possible, the homeowner should take proper care of the system, including having the septic tank pumped every three to five years. More information on properly using an on-site sewage system can be found in the booklet a Homeowner's Guide to Septic Systems.